welcome kids to another episode of Hooked on Jesus Online. We're so glad you're with us today. Do you know that we're almost coming up to a year since we went online and it has been a difficult year for many people. But now with the vaccine and so many other things, it looks like things are returning back to normal. And when times are scary, what all of us need is a little bit of encouragement. And in today's lesson, we learn that we can encourage others because God is encouraging us and God is encouraging. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you are our good father. We thank you that you have been with us throughout uh, this difficult season. We thank you that you have opened new doors. Uh, poured your grace, poured your mercy upon our lives, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we can turn to you in times of trouble. We pray, Father, that as we go through this lesson, you would speak to us and help us to keep remembering what you have done in our lives. We pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Let's think a little bit about encouragement. Encouragement is the act of giving somebody support or hope, allowing them to recognize that they can do better or they can actually do. You know, when HOJ went online, I was not certain I could do these videos, but the other teachers encouraged me and here I am doing them for you month on month. Isn't that nice? But that is something that we can do for others, help them to do more things in their lives. And that is what God calls us to do. You know, the Bible is this amazing book where God reveals his truth and he teaches us how to behave and act through the lives of all of these other people. And as we read our Bibles, we learn to understand what Jesus has in store for us, how to respond and become more Christ-like. In today's story, we are looking at the life of Apostle Paul. Do you remember him? He was the one who God met with marvelously. Before that, Saul was persecuting, uh, no, Paul was persecuting the Christians and his name was Saul. So let's look at today's video which we found online and the details of the link are available in the description. It is an amazing story where Paul is in a storm and he manages to encourage everybody else. Let's watch. they needed to believe in Jesus to be saved. He also taught and supported the early churches. Now one day Paul went to Jerusalem to teach and he ended up being arrested, imprisoned and kept for over two years. But he appealed to Caesar in Rome. The truth was that God had wanted this to happen to Paul in Jerusalem so that he would speak of Jesus to the leaders there and in Rome after that. In all of this, Paul was working for God and following his lead. In Acts 23 verse 11, the Bible says that God said to Paul, Be brave, Paul. You have told people about me in Jerusalem. You must do the same in Rome. So Paul was taken with other prisoners and placed on a ship which set sail with Luke and Roman soldiers also on board. The ship sailed out into the Mediterranean Sea, following the land and stopped at Myra where they boarded another ship which was sailing for Italy. But then they set off, sailing for many days towards the island of Crete. 
This leg of the journey was delayed by strong winds, but by using the shelter of the island, they eventually made it to Fair Havens in Crete. But this meant it was now the dangerous time of year for sailing, when weather could be unpredictable with fierce storms. While there, Paul spoke to the centurion, the leader of the Roman soldiers. He explained to them that he saw the voyage would end in disaster, with the loss of the cargo, the ship and the lives of those on board. However, the owner of the ship and the helmsman thought otherwise and they decided they couldn't stay for months at Fairhaven and they decided to press on for Phoenix, another port on Crete to spend the winter. So they set sail, and they must have thought they had made the right decision because the weather was good for sailing. But then the wind changed direction and became stronger. A fierce wind from the northeast hammered the ship and they couldn't sail into it. Eventually they just had to let the wind take them and run in the same direction. With the weather worsening and fearing the loss of the lifeboat they told, the sailors tied the boat to the side of the ship while the wind lashed them and the salt spray stung their eyes, making every action difficult on the rocking ship. With the ship lurching violently and crashing in the stormy seas, the crew bound ropes underneath the hull of the ship in the hope that it would stop it from breaking apart in the storm. Then they took down all the sails and let the winds take the ship. This continued overnight, with the storm-driven boat being thrown about and the crew were fearful. But the next day, the storm still continued. They stopped eating, either from sickness or from the hope that fasting would please God so that they were spared. They threw the cargo overboard in the hope this lightened the ship. They wanted it to float higher in the water so it wouldn't be swamped. But the storm raged on. The next day, they threw even the ship's tackle overboard. The ropes and pulleys that were used to load cargo with went overboard along with other items, probably left to drag in the sea, as was done to slow the ship in a storm and help keep her pointing in the right direction. After several days not seeing the sun nor the stars in the stormy skies, they gave up hope that they would be saved. The ship was driven up and down the sea and they had no idea where they were. There is no doubt that Paul would have been praying for the lives of all on board the ship. Then, after they hadn't eaten for many days, Paul rose to speak to those aboard. He reminded them that he had warned them about this happening, probably so that they would take seriously what he would say now. He told them he had seen an angel from God that had said he would survive to be taken to Rome and appear in front of Caesar. It also said that God had granted him the lives of all those with him, that he would answer Paul's prayers for their safety. He explained to them that God would be true to his word and that they were to run aground on an island. Now during the 14th night being blown about, the sailors sensed they were nearing land and started checking the depth of the water. They found it was getting shallower and shallower, so they started to fear they would be thrown onto rocks and they lowered anchors from the rear of the ship to slow or stop it. The sailors on the ship were lowering the lifeboat, pretending they were going to put out more anchors, but Paul realised they really intended rowing away. He quickly warned the soldiers that if the sailors left the ship, none of them could be saved. So the centurion, trusting Paul, had his soldiers cut away the lifeboat and drop it into the sea so that they couldn't do it again. Then as the morning came, Paul persuaded them to eat. They had been 14 whole days without food up to this point. Paul broke bread, gave thanks to God and split it with them. They then threw the rest of the cargo overboard so that the ship would float high in the water and get far up whatever shore they approached. But their trials weren't over. When daylight arrived, they saw a sandy bay and raised the main sail. 
they dropped the anchors into the sea and tried to sail up onto the beach. But they struck a sandbar while still a distance from the shore and stuck fast. It was a dangerous position to be in with the waves beginning to break the ship as they struck it from behind. Now, it was normal in these situations to kill the prisoners to stop them escaping. So the soldiers prepared to do this. But the centurion, wanting to save Paul, stopped them. He got everyone who could swim to jump into the sea and swim ashore. The rest he told to take planks and other parts of the ship to use as floats to reach the shore. And everyone made it to the shore alive. All 276 of them, just as the angel had told Paul. This video story is from the Acts 27 chapter. Let me tell you what I understood from this chapter. Paul was busy listening to God and he was following his ways. Even when Paul was a prisoner, isn't it amazing? how the centurion treated Paul with respect because mostly prisoners would not be treated, treated that way. They recognized that he was imprisoned for his faith in Jesus. While the centurion did not listen uh, to Paul and they continued to set sail despite, despite Paul's warning because Paul had told them that it would be dangerous to set sail but the centurion listened to the boat owner and other more knowledgeable people. Paul still continued to pray. And Jesus met with Paul and told him that don't worry. I have a plan that will take you to Rome to proclaim my kingdom. So you will be saved and all of these other lives will be saved. But there will be loss of cargo. And Paul encouraged everybody on the boat but he also had to remind them that sometimes you have to listen to God rather than trust in your own knowledge you know and and Paul and all of the people on the boat were saved now let's think of how this applies to us when we pray and we read the Bible we are listening to what God says to us and when he tells us things we can easily encourage everyone. We recognize that even when we are in tough situations, Jesus is always in control because God has a plan for our life, just as he had a plan for Paul's life. And from that strength that Jesus, who is the sovereign God, is in control, we can do many, many more things. It doesn't depend on us, but God enables us to do things. And similarly, we can strengthen our friends by telling them that Jesus is in control of their lives too. And if they will listen to him, he will enable them to do many more things. Now, isn't that amazing? I didn't think I could make videos, but here I am because somebody encouraged me and God is helping me put it together. Technology makes things so much easier, right? At the right time, the right tools become available. Yes, when we feel discouraged, we can simply run to the Word of God and stand on the promises of God. Remember, God told Paul, I have a plan for you. You are going to survive because I need you to go to Rome. Similarly, God has plans for us and He has promises for us in the Bible. So we can just stand on those promises. Now in Isaiah 41.10 it says, Do not be afraid for I am with you. Do not be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you with my victorious right hand. Now when we say that, wouldn't we get encouraged? Yes we would. Because we would remember that we are in the hands of the living God. The Bible also tells us that God is our strong tower, our fortress, our deliverer, our shield and the one in whom we can take refuge. God arms us with strength. God makes us able to do all sorts of things. So you can easily know that you are amazing and you are brave and you are beautiful because you are made in the image of God. 
and God loves you. And this is the encouragement that we can give everybody else as well. Because God is a God of love. And He is a God who came and died for our sins and rose again so that we could live victorious lives. You know, there is a quote that I once heard. It says, sometimes when you're in a dark place, you think you've been buried, but actually you've been planted. Because God sometimes plants us so we can be more fruitful. Correct? The Bible says that when a grain of seed falls into the ground, it remains a grain of seed, but then it then it comes to life and it grows and it gets planted and it bears more fruit. And we are like that with in the hands of our God. So what we're going to do today is we're going to learn an amazing song that encourages, encourages us and always reminds us that God is good. I hope you enjoy it. It has some lovely words that are going to be up on the screen right now. And the way we've done it today is that instead of artwork, you're going to learn this action song. So there's a video by the Hillsong Kids teaching you the actions and then there's the song. So what we recommend is that you learn the actions by listening to that, by watching that video a couple of times. And then you play the song and get your parents to record you doing the action so that we can see it all. Alright, let's watch those videos. Here it is, episode 10, Hillsong Kids Actions. Today's song is You Are Good from the album Follow You. Jesus, every day I'm gonna stand for you and say I'm You are good because God is good. That's right. Now this one is a tricky dance number, so you might have to rewind it a few times, but I think you can do it. All right, so we start off, hands pointing up, we come forward. One and two, then we come to the side, hands to the mouth and open. Then we do our punches down. We go one and two, hands to the heart, open. We punch down again, one and two, two punches down. I will see, and we come forward on that one. Excellent, all right, let's try that to the words. Here we go. Get up, get out, see hands and open, punching. Down, down, about His love. Punch again. One, two, two punches. I will see. Did you get it? Let's keep going. So this time we start with the box step. We go round, two, three. We punch again. One, two hands to the heart and open. Then we get to do a sway, JB. We go one and two all the way around. Oh, and my God. <laughs> All right, let's try that out of the words. We start with the box step. One generation to the, the next punch. We'll One, two, heart, open. Sway, sway, round. My, my God. All right, it's time for the running section. So we turn and we run. We run, run, run. Then we do a pose. I don't want to just sit around. We can do any pose there. Then we run the other way. Run, run, run. Be another face in the crowd. Again, you can do whatever action you want. Back to the centre. Run, run, run. We do shoulder up, up, up. Then we run crazy back into our positions in this freedom that I have found. So we do run, run. I don't want to just sit around. Run, run, run. I'll be another face in the crowd. Run, run, run. I'll answer when I call my name. Back into the centre. this freedom that I have found. All right, it's chorus time. Here we go. So we do two punches with our right arm. Jesus. Then we do big strong arms. And we go down and down. Trick is we do that when we're turning. So we go down and down. You got that? So we go Jesus and then we punch down, down. Good. Then we do hand up, up and down. Then we come forward, forward, big jump, up. That's it. This is all while we're jumping. Whew. Then we do big punch to the side. One, two, three. We run again to the side. 
arms straight, head to the front, shuffle. You are good and you are good. All right, everyone take a deep breath. Whew, let's try that all with the words. We go punch, punch. Jesus round. I'm going arms up, down, big jump. Woo, three jumps. Running. Head. You are good and you are good. And here's the next bit. We punch again, easy. Punch and punch across the See, that's it. We just wriggle our arm. Then we do the box step again. One and two down the street, good. Then we sway, so our arms come open and we sway side and side round, JB we go. Yes. My hands up, God. Ooh. All right, and with the words, we go punch. Across the land, overseas. Maybe a short walk down the and we sway. We'll tell them in mind and turn. Oh, oh, oh. My oh, God, oh. yeah! Woo, good job you can do those actions they seem quite simple I think I might be able to as well so let's try it to the actual song remembering that Jesus is God and he is good so this is our time your videos we would love to see them I'm gonna end with a 
prayer to do. Okay, I hope you had fun. I found this prayer, but I thought it was the perfect one to remind us how God was always in control. Father God, you are the wind in my sails. You guide me as I steer and find direction. You give me the strength to keep on going. You watch over me as I navigate stormy seas. You are the harbor when I stop for rest. You are my encourager when I lose hope. You are the lighthouse that keeps my path safe. You are always with me, always. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Father. We bless you. Amen. So have a lovely week, kids. Take care. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you liked our video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel.